November 26th, 2018. Mars. NASA's InSight probe approaches the red planet. It touches down at Elysium Planitia. It joins a growing regiment of landers and orbiters. The data they provide will tell scientists if, when, and how the red planet can be made fit for human habitation. There's a desire to do something very dramatic to change the planet so that it is habitable. The prize is massive. Literally an entire planet ready for populating. For many, it's a plan that's not just possible, it's necessary. Some people believe that our planet is in great danger and that someday we'll have to leave Earth. Earth won't last forever. So in order to survive, we're going to need to move to Mars. It's easy to exaggerate the threats facing Earth, but it would be foolish to ignore them. From within, the growing destructive power of weapons technology. From outside, the increasing number of asteroids narrowly missing Earth. This is not science fiction. This is guaranteed by the laws of physics and probability. To stay risks annihilation. The dinosaurs never conquered space. And look what happened to them. But Mars isn't going to hand itself over to human colonists without a fight. The atmosphere is 100 times thinner than Earth's. Without this heat-retaining, insulating blanket, temperatures on Mars plunge to minus 225 degrees. It's like being at an altitude of about 20 miles and saying, OK, I'm good. No, you're not good. You're dead. You wouldn't last much longer than 10 or 15 seconds. Your body would just become a freeze-dried carcass. But Mars hasn't always been like this. There are lots of observations that suggest that in the past, Mars had conditions that were right for life. Mars may have actually had an atmosphere a lot like Earth's. We know there are places on Mars where there were massive floods of water. A thousand times the flow of the Mississippi. Today on Mars, this water and gas lies beneath the surface. If they were to be released, the atmosphere and landscape would fundamentally change. We know that Mars has huge reserves of water and carbon dioxide in its polar ice caps. These could potentially be used to create an atmosphere. Water vapor and carbon dioxide are greenhouse gases vital elements for an atmosphere fit for humans. The theory would be to melt the ice caps by putting greenhouse gases back into Mars's atmosphere. It may be able to sustain itself as a warm enough planet for us to survive on. There are a number of ideas for melting the Martian ice caps, but most of them are unrealistic, vastly expensive, or practically impossible. Tech billionaire Elon Musk thinks that we can regenerate Mars's atmosphere by nuking the ice caps at the poles. You'd need thousands of these weapons, probably more than we've actually built, to make a dent in something as big as the, the ice caps that you see on Mars. Some scientists believe an atmosphere can be hewn from the Martian rocks. What if we set up factories all across Mars with the sole purpose of pumping out CO2 and water vapor to regenerate an atmosphere? You would land little robot factories all over the planet with these chimneys coming up, and, and that would just you know take rock and process it chemically to make greenhouse gases, making the atmosphere that isn't already there. But biologists now believe there's a much simpler and cheaper way to transform Mars. One thing we know for certain 
is one of the most powerful forces in nature is life itself. The atmosphere of Mars is dominant with CO2. Somehow you have to turn that CO2 into oxygen. So you're gonna have to plant plants all over the place. They breathe carbon dioxide and output oxygen. Let them start growing and gradually, organically terraform the planet. Although the climate on Mars is too harsh for most of Earth's plant life to survive, scientists have begun to engineer new enhanced super vegetation that is capable of growing, procreating, and spreading across the red planet. We need to genetically engineer plants that will grow on Mars. Scientists are now able to move genetic traits between organisms. We have strawberries that grow in winter thanks to antifreeze genes taken from Arctic flounder. We have corn that has been made poisonous to insects. All kinds of crops and animals have been genetically manipulated to make them grow bigger or act differently. Scientists have crossed some extremophile DNA with some Arctic tundra plants and had them grow in a jar that had a Mars-like atmosphere. The results are incredibly exciting and show that genetically modified organisms could breathe new life into Mars, transforming the planet's atmosphere. Not just plants, but maybe animals too. We could send fire ants and kudzu, because those things live everywhere and you can't kill them. And I think it would terraform Mars in no time. We could have an atmosphere and liquid oceans within a few generations. Mars might just be able to sustain human life. We could potentially transform the red planet into another blue planet and even another green planet. That's an amazing thing to contemplate. Imagine a time in the near future. The first colonists set foot on NASA's bioengineered planet. You get there and your instruments say it's okay to open your visor. To breathe the air of a planet that you helped engineer would be literally earth shattering, or should I say Mars shattering. What happens if our super fertile genetically modified organisms come in contact with Martian life. If we start making Mars more hospitable to life, are we going to wake up things that have been lying dormant there for millions of years?